good job your boy Ross back at again with another video so we're going to check out 10 WWE wrestlers who attempted murder in the ring we've seen countless times in the attitude era uh in the ruthless aggression era where someone legitimately was trying to kill someone on live television the one instance I can think of immediately is when Stone Cold had Triple H in that little car and he had like this little crane he was just lifting them up and then he pretty much dropped them triple h should technically be dead stone cold should technically be arrested because he literally just killed someone on live television it's just one of those funny things or when triple h paid rikishi to run over uh stone cold he tried to kill him it's it's the funniness of wrestling man when you really think about it, like, yo, they tried to kill someone on live television. What is going on here? But appreciate all the love and support, man. I'm not really feeling 100%, so if I sound different, I'm a little under the weather. Took a COVID test today, came back negative, so I'm thankful for that. It's just uh, allergies are kicking my butt right now, so I, I wanted to get this video out to you guys, record this before I go KO. So hope you guys appreciate it, man. Let's get right into this bad boy. Whoo! WWE superstars can quickly <clears throat> overstep the mark. The competitive nature of pro wrestling can quickly turn sinister and certain yep. superstars can attempt to end their arch rival once and for all. Although these acts of violence are done in kayfabe, they certainly push the boundaries on what pro wrestling as an art form is truly supposed to be. Yep. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who attempted murder in the ring. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook Triple H for exclusive Triple H was definitely part lists. of a, a, a few of them for sure. Him and that damn sledgehammer, bro. Like, bro, put the sledgehammer down, man. Number 10, I Undertaker hangs yep. Big Boss Man. At WrestleMania 15 featured a truly underwhelming Hell in a Cell showdown between The Undertaker and The Big Boss Man. After The Undertaker pinned Boss Man, the dead man alongside the brute proceeded to place a noose around Boss Man's neck and raise him along with a Hell in a Cell structure. This seemingly had killed off the Boss Man in a live execution on the biggest pay-per-view of the year. Just a few weeks after Boss Man's apparent demise, he went back on television and it was never explained how he survived such yeah. a heinous act. <laughs> Number 9, NWO hell? Death by Truck <clears throat> The dream match between The Rock and Hulk Hogan sold itself and mm -hmm. it didn't need an extensive build-up. However, WWE decided to book an overly complex storyline building up to the match which included the NWO attempting to murder the Great One. On the February 2002 edition of Raw, The Rock was being transported to hospital via an ambulance. But this is when the NWO mm -hmm. hijacked the ambulance and proceeded to crash into it with a Mack truck. But when The Rock returned to television, it was as if nothing had happened. <coughs> yep. And The Rock embraced with Hogan following their match at WrestleMania. That's funny, bro. You tried to kill me with a goddamn semi truck and after the match, we cool. It's all good, bro. What? Recipe Scott Hall. Also, 18 The Rock <laughs> for giving the man who just tried to murder him just That's a few funny, weeks bro. ago. Number 8 Seth Rollins Death by Sledgehammer. One of the most controversial and infamous matches in recent times is the match between Seth oh, Rollins man. and The Fiend from Hell in a Cell 2019. Awful. The match ended in a no contest as Rollins' actions were said to be too far for a Hell in a Cell matchup. But even though Hell in a Cell is supposed to be anything goes, Rollins would target the Fiend's head throughout the match, hitting a total of 11 curb stomps. 11. Rollins would then utilize weapons by using a chair, a ladder, a toolbox, all impacting the Fiend's head. Rollins was then going to put the Fiend out of his misery by hitting him over the head with a <clears throat> sledgehammer, which would have seemingly killed the Fiend. Yeah. But this was when the referee called for the bell, bringing to a close the worst received Hell in a Cell matchup of all time. I... This is the problem when you book someone like The Fiend to face the champ. It's, you got to put the strap on them. You have to. You book them this way. They put they put him in a title opportunity way too soon. He shouldn't have been. The Fiend is a character that doesn't really need the title. Can he get it at some point? Sure. But it doesn't work only because of his character is so mystical like, he can't be killed. He can't be beaten. So, you booked yourself in either you have Seth Rollins try to murder him or you have The Fiend just no-sell everything and then kill him. That's exactly what happened here. Time. Number 7, Baron Corbin throwing a wrestler oh, off the building. Yeah. Due to the outbreak of COVID-19, WWE were forced to host the annual Money in the Bank pay-per-view from WWE's headquarters. 
Now, the match received praise for doing something that's never been done before, but it led to a lot of questions from fans, mainly questioning how Baron Corbin got away with attempted murder. Yeah. Towards the close of the match, Corbin would throw both Rey he Mysterio and off Alistair building, Black bro. off the roof of the WWE HQ. Corbin attempted to commit murder in order to become Mr. Money in the <sighs> Bank, which was truly a step too far. And in reality, both Mysterio and Black fell on a safe platform which was placed below the roof of WWE HQ. Now, this would be addressed by Mysterio the following night on Raw after WWE needed a clear explanation as to how Mysterio and Black had <laughs> suffered such a substantial fall. Number 6. Braun Strowman <coughs> being crushed in a garbage truck A Braun Strowman was involved in a ton of near-death experiences yeah, during his time in WWE. It seemed common practice during the peak of his run in WWE for top WWE superstars to attempt to stop the monster among men by attempting to dramatically end his life. Yep. This was the case at the TLC pay-per-view in 2017, as Braun was teaming with The Miz, Kane and The Bar against the trio of Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and Kurt Angle. But during the course of the match, Braun's partners turned on him and they actually attempted to murder right, him. Yeah, put him they in, would the, place him in the back of a garbage truck and the operator of the truck would reluctantly release the switch on it, seemingly crushing the former Universal Champion to death. Braun returned to television just eight days later and it was presented to the audience as if Braun had been living in the garbage truck the whole time, which truly baffled fans. Oh Number five, God. The Undertaker throws Rikishi off a cell. This but without question, the most famous bro. moment in the brutal history of the Hell in a Cell legendary was when The Undertaker moment. threw mankind from the top of the cell structure. Thought he was dead. However, this wasn't the only time that The Undertaker would attempt murder inside a Satan structure, as at the 2000 Armageddon pay per view, six of the top superstars in the entire WWE battled it out yep. for the title. But as The Undertaker and Rikishi were battling on the top of the cell, the Undertaker decided to push Rikishi off the top of it, which resulted in Rikishi landing on the back of a truck, which mm -hmm. was filled with sawdust. The spot was incredibly scary, and Rikishi himself revealed that he told The Undertaker to tell his family that he loved him, just in case anything went wrong with the Damn. biggest bump of his career. Damn, nah, that bump was crazy, bro. Of course, you could see, like, it was soft padding, but it's still, anything can go wrong. Bro, watching that as a kid, I, I'm like, bro, don't ever have a match with The Undertaker. Cause he's gonna throw you off of something. That's his thing, right? Like, bro, I thought he I thought Rikishi was dead, bro. Number four, Randy Orton setting a light the yeah. fiend. Now the feud between Randy Orton and The Fiend took a drastic turn at the TLC pay-per-view in 2020. They competed in a Firefly Inferno match, and once Orton had defeated The Fiend by setting his back on fire, Orton decided to take things one step further. Orton would douse The Fiend's body with gasoline and then proceed to set it alight. It the final so WWE pay-per-view of 2020 seemingly went off the air with The Fiend being burnt to death. The Fiend would eventually return to WWE Looks television, so albeit with a new appearance to show the damage of the burns, but it was never logically explained how The Fiend survived. Fans had to simply assume that this was down to his supernatural abilities. Yep. Number 3. Shane McMahon's Vehicular Murder When Kane unmasked for the first time in 2003, one of his first rivalries was, was with Shane, Shane McMahon. Yeah. Shane I was attempted to rivalry. get revenge on Kane after Kane had performed a tombstone pile driver on Shane's own mother, Linda McMahon. The two would feature in a number of infamous yeah. segments, including Shane knocking Kane into a dumpster, which was engulfed in fire. And more notably, Shane attempted to end Kane once and for all. Yep. During the build to their they had some cool matches. I ain't gonna lie to you. Kane versus Shane, they had some fucking fun matches, bro. They had some fun matches. Last man standing match at Survivor Series, Shane would trap Kane in a limo in a parking lot, then proceed to send yep. the limo helplessly into a truck, which should have killed Kane. Yep. The next week on Raw, Kane was seen waking up in a hospital room, having survived the crash, and Kane went on a destructive spree, laying out all medical personnel that fell into his path. Number Kane, two, that he, Kane was brutal, bro. That's that's the Kane I know. That's the Undertaker Kane buries know. Paul Bearer in cement. Yep, I one of the most this nonsensical storylines in yep. WWE history saw the Undertaker attempt to kill his longtime manager Paul Bearer, and this took place at the Great American, <laughs> Great American Bash pay per view Bash. in 2004, yep, yep. as Taker would face the Dudley Boys in a handicap match. The match had the added stipulation that if the Undertaker didn't forfeit the match and purposely lose, Bearer would be buried in cement. Now, following Taker's victory, The Undertaker decided to pull the lever on the cement truck himself, which led to Bearer being buried alive yeah. in cement. On the following edition of SmackDown, it was explained that The Undertaker no longer had any purpose for Bearer, but in reality, Bearer needed emergency surgery and needed to be written off WWE programming. Uh. And number one, Triple H Drive-By. 
Now, the Attitude Era saw its fair share of memorable storylines, but perhaps the most memorable of all saw Stone Cold Steve Austin yep, get I'm run down by a car this. at Survivor Series in 1999. This led to a year-long storyline where it was eventually uncovered that it was Rikishi who was driving the vehicle and who was following direct orders from Triple H. And once Austin eventually found out that Triple H was behind the whole thing, he set his sights on him in a no-DQ match at the Survivor Series pay-per-view in 2000. The match came to a close as Triple H attempted to escape the arena in a car as he simply wanted away from Austin who was thirsty to cause as much damage as humanly possible on him. As Triple H was about to escape, Austin used a forklift to raise Triple yep, H's car 30 about this. feet in the air before dropping Killing it down. Yep, pretty much Triple H dead. survived the fall and would only miss a short time away from WWE programming. The feud would continue in the months that followed, culminating in an acclaimed three stages of hell matchup mm -hmm. which took place at 2001's No Way Out pay-per-view. But there you have it folks, 10 WWE wrestlers who were talking about murder that, in the ring. That's, oh man. <clears throat> That's wrestling for you, bro. That's that's the, the the campiness of wrestling. You try to kill your opponent, and then they'll be back on the show a few weeks later. Like, wait, didn't you just... How did you... Y'all remember when Vince McMahon's limo blew up, and then they planned a fake memorial? Y'all remember that? I remember watching that. I think it was like 2007, 2008. It had to be. Vince McMahon, he got into the limo at the end of Raw, and it blew up. And then they planned a fake memorial. I was like, what the hell? Like, bro, we, we know he's not dead. You just go on the internet. You check. I was like, what the fuck is this? I remember that. And then he came back a few weeks later. That's wrestling for you. But comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite clip of attempted murder from this video, man. Appreciate all the love and support. Uh, Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.